Democratic Congressman Jim Himes of Connecticut joining us here at the table in New York. Congressman, it's good to see you. Um, it's worth sometimes pausing to remember, because we are so immersed in everything Donald Trump for the last eight years, how extraordinary this is. Talking about a former president, a guy who wants to be president again, with one, likely two, federal cases against him, one in Georgia, let's not forget one, and then a defamation suit in New York as well. It's an extraordinary moment to have this man running for president at this time. It, it is an extraordinary moment, and uh, you can sort of see the trajectory here, and what a bizarre trajectory, right? Um, Donald Trump, if he's distinguished for one thing in the judiciary, it is just getting obliterated in court. You told the story about the latest attempt to get the Georgia case sidelined. Sixty lost cases claiming election fraud, you know, reversal after reversal after reversal. So the idea that, that, that President Trump is going to get indicted and he's going to skate free of all of these things, including things where we just saw the evidence. We saw the photos of the classified documents at Mar-a-Lago. We heard him ask to find 11,000 votes in Georgia. The idea that he's going to skate free is very, very low probability. But, and this is the interesting political part of it, is that going to change the mind of a single one of his loyal voters? I don't think so. So I think, um, you know, I think even if there are convictions, no matter what happens, his core base of support still makes him the Republican nominee for president of the United States. And Mike, we've been talking about that number from the New York Times poll, which is 71 percent of Republicans say we have to stand with Donald Trump through these investigations. And another 71 percent say he actually didn't do anything wrong in these cases that we talk about every day. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the peril for our democracy, actually. I mean, people who no matter how many indictments come down, no matter if he's tried and found guilty, people, some people, a lot of people perhaps are going to say, you know, well, it's all politics. So let me ask you, in terms of the other political party in this country, the Republican Party, the other major political party, what goes through your mind when you see the reality of this, and they see the reality of it, and yet so few in the House or in the Senate will stand up and say, hey, it's just too much? So it's, it's self-preservation, right? And, you know, you had two case studies in what happens when Republicans stand up and say, this is bananas, this is so inconsistent with who we are. That, of course, is Adam Kinzinger and Liz Cheney, neither of whom are in the United States Congress anymore. You know, Donald Trump, this is metaphorical, of course, he's got a button. And if he presses that button, your career is over. And so what you see amongst my Republican colleagues is, is, is behavior somewhere on a spectrum on the crazy side, claiming that barisma is real, that, you know, uh, uh, that none of this happened denying the facts that are there for all to see, to on the other end of the spectrum, and this is where perhaps some of my friends lie, just not wanting to talk about it, not wanting to talk about it, trying to say, well, yeah, that's, that's bad, but look at what Bill Clinton did, you know, the whataboutist defense, and really they just don't want to talk about it. But at the core of this is the realization that Donald Trump, to this day, despite the many indictments, despite what we're going to see in the next couple of months, he can end your career in a heartbeat, and most of my Republican colleagues don't want their careers ended. So, Congressman, I want to get your take on two different things that Donald Trump called for your Republican colleagues to do uh, at his rally over the weekend in Pennsylvania. One was to stop sending funding to Ukraine unless Ukraine investigated the Bidens, which, mind you, is exactly what it did in 2019 that got himself impeached the first time. And the second was to forge forward with an impeachment inquiry of President Biden this coming days after Speaker McCarthy seemed to try to tap the brakes on that. Well, I mean, the good news is that my Republican colleagues they don't necessarily listen to his advice. And, and on the topic of a Biden impeachment, look, if, if impeachable crimes are surfaced, if, if they are surfaced, and I say this as a Democrat, fine. They have found no evidence whatsoever uh, that there are impeachable crimes. And, and by the way, don't take it from this Democrat. Take it from Nancy Mace of South Carolina, who just a couple of days ago said, we have got to stop this or we're going to lose the majority. Because Nancy Mace understands that while that kind of nonsense, and it is utter and complete nonsense, and it's dangerous nonsense, by the way, you know, let's just stop helping the Ukrainians so that the Russians can take over a country. It's dangerous nonsense. Nancy Mace understands um, that if they take that advice, uh, uh, they go the route that Donald Trump has taken the Republican Party since 2016, which is losing, 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 losing the Senate, losing the House, losing the presidency. And again, it takes somebody like Nancy Mace, who represents a more purple district, to speak that truth. But, but they get that. And so I don't think they're taking that advice anytime soon. Congress, I want to ask you about something you said yesterday. We had your colleague Dan Goldman here a few minutes ago talking about what he heard in that oversight interview of Hunter Biden's business partner. And you said something, by the way, we've been saying on this show throughout this Hunter Biden episode, which is that if Hunter Biden broke the law, he should be prosecuted. 
It's clear he broke the law with respect to taxes, possibly the ownership of a handgun. He should be held accountable for that. You say that's true, and that's something no Republican has ever said about Donald Trump or his family. But the, the, what the Congress is theoretically looking into is some tie to Joe Biden. They've provided no evidence for that. They haven't found it. They've been working on this for years and years and years. But it is, I think, an important distinction. If there was a law broken, that's for the justice system to handle with Hunter Biden, and they should do that. The question is, does Joe Biden have any relationship to that? And the answer so far is no. Yeah, and understand what's happening here psychologically, right? Donald Trump was impeached twice for things that the American people could watch on TV. First was holding up Ukraine aid in exchange for uh, dirt on the Bidens, right? There was no question about the facts there. The second time he was impeached was because he sent a mob of people to attack the Capitol. No question about the facts. Now, whether that was criminal, you know, Special Counsel Smith will tell us in a couple of days or so. No question about the facts. What's interesting about the Biden thing, the Republicans, it's, it, it's just this internal primal urge to visit retribution on the Democrats. And the problem is they can't find a fact. So, look, uh, is there problematic questions about Hunter Biden? And, and I, I said something that shouldn't be controversial, which is that if you committed a crime, you should be held accountable. But have they pointed to anything to suggest that Joe Biden engaged in corrupt behavior? No. And on the contrary, Hunter Biden's business problems uh, partner said, uh, yeah, he was on some phone calls talking about the weather talking about the weather, exchanging pleasantries. You know, is that in the category of, you know, pr uh, presidential family members that are problematic, Billy Carter, Hugh Rodham, maybe it's in that category, but it is sure and absolutely not a crime. So, you know, they're just in this box of their own making. And we played a sound by even as recently as last night, James Comer on with Sean Hannity. Sean Hannity all but pleading with James Comer, show us something, what do you have? And he said, well, we sure hope we get something. There's a lot of smoke, but no fire yet. His words there.